I've been testing out the Sanhima Kalbari Mark II rooftop tent for a couple of months now. You can see it behind me on the D-Max. And in that time, I've had the chance to test out in quite a broad range of situations, ranging from some very wet nights down south through the Don Tricasta National Park in Dwelling Up, where I am right now. I was camping in it in this exact location just last weekend. And me and Bianca also spent about 10 nights sleeping in up north through the Steep Point and the Shark Bay region of WA. Those episodes coming very shortly. But in that time, yeah, plenty of rainy nights, plenty of corrugation to test the strength of the tent itself so i feel like i know it well enough to give you guys an honest review so that's exactly what we're doing today we've parked up in the bush here to run through everything i like about the tent everything i dislike the setup procedure the installation overall dimensions and hopefully everything else you guys want to know Before we get started, I will just mention that Vic Off Road did provide this tent for me to review, so massive thanks to them for yeah, letting me experiment with this tent and really put it through its paces. And they were very clear in wanting a completely unbiased and honest review, so that's exactly what they're gonna get. We're gonna be running through the things I like as well as a few things I quite dislike about the tent to try and give you guys as much info as possible. Anyway, let's jump straight into the video, starting with the setup procedure. Sorry guys, you'll have to excuse my sunnies, but it's a really bright afternoon here. And I thought before we run through the setup procedure, let's quickly cover off on the overall dimensions so you know it's gonna fit on your vehicle or not. So this measures in at 2.2 meters long, 1.34 meters wide, and the website lists the height as being 23 centimeters, obviously when it's all closed up, but I've measured it for myself and it actually comes in at 21 centimeters from the bottom of the mounting rail to the very top of the tent. And that's great news, it actually makes it one of the slimmest rooftop tents on the market and it'll be very handy if you have a low garage like I do. Weight-wise, it comes in at 70 kilos, which is definitely on the lighter side for hard shell rooftop tents. Normally, they range between 65 kilos and anywhere up to around the 95 kilo mark. So 70 is not too bad. It's going to make it a bit easier for loading it on and off the vehicle. And depending on what vehicle you're putting it on, you might also need to be conscious of your vehicle's uh, roof load capacity as well. Not such an issue for canopy setups like mine, but still something worth keeping in mind. As for installation, it's quite a standard system that you'll find on the bottom of most rooftop tents. Essentially, there's two mounting channels that run uh, lengthways down the bottom of the tent, and then it comes with brackets that wrap around your existing roof racks or roof rails and then bolt into those channels, and obviously, they can be slid forwards and backwards. Now, it should suit most setups, but however, my canopy is a little bit different, so I do have to customize those brackets slightly, but generally speaking, it should suit most setups. So the setup procedure is pretty straightforward. All you want to do is take the included silver key, jump up to the back of the tent, and then unlock these two latches. There's a little key slot on the front, and you just quarter turn those left with that key. Then these two latches, pretty simple to operate. Basically just grab this top section and pull it forward, and that allows you to release the bottom section from the tent. Do that on both sides, and we found like if you try and use the handle here to push the tent up, the latch just grabs itself back onto the little uh, pin underneath. So we found what works best for us is just grab both those latches, swing them open like so, and then actually use those to push the tent up. Now, as that sets up, I'm just gonna grab this elastic piece and pull it down to clip around the frame of the tent, and I'll jump inside to finish off the setup procedure. So jumping inside the tent, we'll find an aluminium C-shaped pole on the floor of the tent. It's just a matter of picking that up, taking the ends and sliding them over the locating pins in the corner of the tent. And then once that's clipped in place, just grab this whole pole section and just push it forward through the material, kind of helping it as you do so, so it doesn't get pinched. So get that into position, doesn't have to be too perfect, something like that. You can straighten up your lighting strip now if you would like to. And then up on the roof of the tent, there's two poles that have Velcroed in place. So I'll just reach over, grab this first pole out, swing it down, there's a little clasp on the front there. Undo that so your pole can extend, bring it forward and then clip it in place over that main frame we just installed and then lock it in place. Now, one thing I will mention is that when this tent was brand new, that white clip that you push around the frame of the tent, that was incredibly tight to the point where we thought we we're actually gonna break it by pushing it around this frame. 
Obviously it didn't break, but it did show some signs of stress where it's expanded to wrap around the pole. Ever since then, it's now clipped on and off piece of cake, but just something I wanted to mention. So now that first side's done, let's reach over and grab this second pole and do the same on this side. Now it does pay to get this nice and tight because the tighter you set this up, the less material flapping there's gonna be. And the last step is to take the shoe bags and clip them somewhere that's convenient for you. So with the rear access for the tent for us, this tent, by the way, you can access from any of the three sides. We just choose the rear because we've got the ladder mounted on the back of the canopy. So take these shoe bags, this little uh, clip-on carabiner style things at the top. We've just been clipping them to, that's the closing clasp when you shut the tent down. And this is one of the factory tent uh, ladder mounts. So I just clip it there, keeps the shoes tucked there nice next to the ladder, jump in the tent at night, pop our shoes in there and away we go. These are super generously sized as well. So this is just one shoe bag and there's actually two quite large compartments, one at the bottom there and one at the top. So even when me and Bianca were both staying in this tent together, we still just used the one shoe bag. One of us put our shoes down the bottom and one of us put our shoes at the top and that worked quite well. I was a bit skeptical at how this bag was gonna perform during rainy nights, but happy to report we did sleep in this tent through quite a few rainy nights, probably more rainy nights than non-rainy nights, and our shoes never got wet, which was great news. It wasn't super windy though, so that might be a different story if the wind's kind of flapping this around into your shoes. But at the bottom of the bag, there's a strip of Velcro on both sides that when you locate it correctly, keeps that flap uh, pretty well in place. So yeah, no problems to report, and it's a very uh, generously sized bag. It does also come with a ladder, of course, as all rooftop tents do, and this is a very standard telescopic style ladder, although this one does have this like auto close down feature, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to waste time uh, with annoying little catches to try and get the ladder to collapse down. Uh, obviously no need for us really, because we're using the ladder built into the back of the canopy. But if you were gonna be using this ladder instead, there is mounting points on all three sides of the tent. So you can choose which side is more convenient for you to get in from. One thing to keep in mind if you are planning on using the included ladder is that you will have to mount the tent pretty much flush with the side of the vehicle you're wanting to clip the ladder on to. Just with the way these clips are designed, they do have to come pretty much straight down. So if you find that like if you have a canopy set up like this, you will have to kind of mount the tent a bit off center for these ladders to work properly on the sides of the vehicle. And it does also come with a set of roof racks that bolt onto the frame of the tent if you're wanting to carry some extra bits and pieces to your camping destination. But again, just be conscious of your roof's weight capacity. So now the tent is all set up, let's move on to the things we like and dislike about this tent. And I say we, because me and Bianca have both spent a lot of time in this tent and both work together on a list of things we like and dislike about the tent to try and share with you guys as much info as possible. So don't mind me if I occasionally refer back to my list, but just don't want to leave anything out. So number one for the likes is the nice slimline design. Definitely doesn't take up too much room on the roof of the vehicle. Still fits in my garage nice and easily and looks pretty streamlined overall. Number two is that we found this tent to be surprisingly spacious inside, which was a welcome treat for me and Bianca. We were both a bit unsure how it was gonna go because we were coming from a tent that was a little bit wider. But after sleeping in it for seven or eight nights in a row, both uh, stuck together in the tent, we're happy that uh, it didn't feel overly crammed inside. It's definitely not the roomiest tent in the world, but it was surprisingly spacious considering its measurements. And I reckon that comes down to the fact that those walls are really straight up and down. You can kind of use the entirety of the room inside and it's one of the tallest rooftop tents i've ever experienced inside like when it's all set up and you're sitting there uh, right at the tallest point of the tent. There's actually like so much room on top of my head, which is fantastic. And also you can sleep both ends of this tent, but we chose to put our heads at this door end and have our feet kind of in the uh, the hinge section at the front there. It did mean we had to move our pillows out of the way each morning to get in and out of the tent, but it just feels a lot more spacious having your head at the roomier end. Also, the length is pretty decent too. I am six foot two tall and I fit it in here no troubles whatsoever. Although I'd say that's probably the maximum and if you're any taller than six foot two, you might have trouble. Number three is that the mattress in the tent is really comfortable, which is definitely a, uh, a massive bonus when it comes to any rooftop tent. It's a 65 millimeter high density foam mattress, but they seem to have just got that sweet spot between not being too firm and not being too squishy either, which is great. I'm not super fussy when it comes to mattresses, so I'm probably not the best person to judge that. However, Bianca is quite fussy when it comes to mattresses. And even she was saying after sleeping in it for seven or eight nights in a row, she was still nice and comfortable in the morning and uh, didn't wake up feeling sore, which is a big bonus. She actually said it was the most comfortable tent mattress she's ever slept on, so that is definitely saying something. 
Number four is a big one, and that's that we found this tent really good during windy conditions. Now, there was a couple of uh, gripes we had with it during one particular windy night. We both woke up like 4 a.m., and the big strap you used to pull the tent down had made its way down to the side of the tent, and it was just like, uh, rhythmically tapping on the side of the tent, which was a bit annoying. And also the tassels that secure the fly on the top there, they were kind of tapping around as well. But both super easy fixes, so 4 a.m., which is not when you want to be fixing stuff, but either way, hopped out, I grabbed a tie-down strap and I secured the big strap down to one of the ladder mounting points and pulled that nice and taut. No more flapping, and then Bianca just tied the little um, tassels up so they were also silent. So yeah, there's a couple of things that do get affected during wind, but super easy fixes. And now that we know about that, we'd probably just do that in the future before we went to bed. And once those were taken care of, there was absolutely no noise at all. So definitely pass in my books. Number five is gonna be a big deal if you enjoy sleeping on your camping trips, and let's face it, who doesn't? Uh, and that's that this is a really, really dark tent inside. It's made from 420D Oxford fabric, and literally we're waking up at around 9 a.m. on our trip up north, having a bit of a sleep in, and you know when you wake up and you, can, you try and gauge the time of day based on how bright it is, and the sun was fully on the tent at 9 a.m. in the morning, and we're like, oh, a bit of light's coming through. It might be 6 a.m. Maybe the sun's just, just cresting on the horizon. And then we'd unzip the window and this light would just come flooding into the tent. So very dark inside and great if you enjoy sleeping. Number six is the abundance of storage pockets inside the tent. So there's uh, six large pockets up on the roof and because of the orientation we slept in, they were kind of like right in front of us. Super convenient for storing all our bits and pieces, headlamps, phones, wallets, keys, and whatnot. And there's also two extra pockets kind of like if you're treating this as the head end down the foot end of the tent, there's two little pockets, one on each side that's perfect for chucking your socks or beanies or whatnot at nighttime. I should also mention that the tent has a built-in LED light strip that you can run off a standard charge bank. The switch on it is a little bit annoying because it's tap activated and we found sometimes it would activate itself by tapping on the tent pole, but it does put out a decent amount of light and it has both white and amber settings. Number seven is that you can actually pack this tent away with a bit of bedding left inside, which is fantastic news and makes a big difference. Now, not heaps and you can't store your pillows in there as you might expect, but we were able to pack this tent away with two sheets, a full-size doona, and a sleeping bag all inside, and it's still packed down, which was great news. Now, it did make the pack down procedure a bit more challenging, like you really had to put some force to get it to properly seal to do up those catches but for a little bit of extra work, it was well worth the price in our opinion to not have to take that bedding outside the tent every single time you wanted to pack the tent away, not have to store that bedding inside your vehicle either, and then not have to remake the bed every time you set up camp. The next thing we both liked was the abundance of windows throughout the tent. So obviously there's no window on the hard lid that kind of lifts up, but then on both sides, there's a nice big window slash door. On the rear there, there's a nice big opening. You can secure that canvas out of the way, let plenty of breeze in or just enjoy the view. And then probably one of my favorite features about this tent is in the roof section, there's a little sunroof slash skylight type area. So if it's a sunny day, you can unzip that, let the sun come in. If it's a clear night, you can gaze up at the stars at night or probably my my favorite use case is during like a storm or rainy conditions. You can just unzip that, secure the canvas out of the way and just like look up at the rain like pitter pattering on that plastic roof because that's what I should mention, has a plastic covering as well. So no rain's gonna come in the tent, but just a really nice thing to experience if you're into that sort of thing. And the final thing that I personally like is that around the edge of this tent, around the frame, there's bolt channels that you can actually slide bolts into and mount some accessories to the tent itself. Now, and this is something that's quite common on most hard shell rooftop tents, although I find most other ones have angles on the sides, which makes it a bit harder to use those channels. Whereas the San Hema has straight up and down sides, which makes it much more versatile for mounting things like awnings, shower tents, and other accessories. Well, nothing's perfect, so now we're gonna run through the things that we dislike about this tent. The first of which is that this tent is not very fun to pack away during rainy conditions. Now, granted, no tent's gonna be very much fun to pack away during the rain, but this one in particular, because of the way the material kind of folds in, like the front section folds in and then the roof collapses down, you do have the chance for water to get into your tent, which is something we did experience just south of Steep Point. I was packing the tent away and it just started bucketing down with rain. So you're trying to move pretty quickly, zip all the windows shut, try and zip the back door shut. But the biggest culprit for us getting water in was that because the, that back door only zips on the sides and not down the bottom as well, it's just like one little Velcro piece in the middle. When you kind of push it down, 
that canvas can lift and allow water to get in underneath, which is exactly what happened to us. So a bit of a downside, and we did get a bit of water into the tent through that experience, which was not very much fun at all. It might well be something that other tents experience as well, but I just wanted to mention it. Dislike number two is that the hydraulic struts are incredibly uh, strong in this tent, so they really require a lot of force to get it to close down properly. So depending on how physically able you are, that might be something worth considering. Bianca would sometimes hop on the tent and literally sit on it to get it to collapse down if she was putting the tent away by her herself and that seemed to make a big difference but if you don't have access to get on the roof of your vehicle like that it's something worth keeping in mind. Dislike number three is something that Bianca has been particularly vocal about during our use of this tent, and that's when you are packing the tent away, it's, it, the material tends to always find its way out of the seam while you're trying to close it down, and you'll kind of like, you'll tuck one bit in one side, open it up to push that in, and then a bit will chuck out the left side, and you'll tuck that in, and a bit will come out the right hand side again, so quite frustrating. Granted, we were packing it away with quite a bit of bedding inside the tent, which definitely makes this uh, situation a whole lot worse, because since packing away with nothing like it is now, it's a much easier process and one trick I've learned in the last couple of camping trips is to close the tent down to around I don't know it's about 20% left to close then I'll thoroughly tuck all that material in and then very slowly compress that final 20% and I find long as do that really really slowly it uh, the material tends to stay stuck in place which is great. And finally, dislike number four is something we already mentioned in that like section, and that's the strap that comes down and flaps on the side of the tent during windy conditions. Now, it's not the end of the world because you can just jump out and tie it with a ratchet strap or something similar, but definitely something worth mentioning is one of the dislikes. Well, that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts on the Sanhima Cowberry Mark II rooftop tent. Certainly a pretty solid tent that's got a lot going for it. I hope that answered any questions you guys might have had, but if not, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. No, <laughs> Well, I did like this jumper, now it's absolutely ruined for the whole trip. Time to get on the road and enjoy this sunny trip. Beautiful.